Well, we're going to enter in today to the introduction to the book of Job. I think it's quite interesting when you contrast the book of Genesis with the book of Job. Now, chronologically, many believe that they believe, belong in chronological order, that Genesis comes first. And someplace in the middle of Genesis, around chapter 12 or so, uh, we have the events that are recorded about Job. And it uh, is interesting to contrast the two books. Genesis is 50 chapters, while Job is 42 chapters. Genesis is 47 pages in my Bible. And in uh, my Bible, Job is 32 pages. And we know that Genesis covers roughly 2,200 years. Um, probably more than that if you really want to think about uh, creation, but nevertheless uh, covers at least 2,200 years. And uh, it is interesting that Job probably covers somewhere around 180 years because it begins when Job was probably in his 40s because he had adult children and goes 100 and. 10 or so years beyond uh, the events that are recorded. So his lifetime is something around 200 years. Uh, we find the name Job referenced 59 times in the scriptures. And uh, two of those are found in Ezekiel and one in the book of James in the New Testament. And that's the only mentions that we have of Job. Uh, nevertheless, we go from this wide-angle view of the book of Genesis covering all of those years, uh, more than 2,200 years if you can count creation, and then we find Job covering probably less than 100 years, more than likely less than 60 years. Interesting because Genesis covers many, many generations of people. And Job really covers just one generation. Even though he lives on to see his children's children, uh, Job really only covers his lifetime. And, he, and then <laughs> the last verse just tells us, and he lived another 110 years. <laughs> so, it's quite an interesting contrast. So it's like God gives us this wide angle view of all of these years historically with many lessons to apply to our lives. And then he takes almost as much time to focus in on one person. Why in the world with only one book, the Bible, and with only 66 books in that Bible, does he take so much time with Job? Well, I think the answer can be very well summed up, but it's not in the patience of Job, because I don't find Job all that patient. But I think it's better summed up uh, when you think about the endurance of Job. Uh, actually, they come straight out of Scripture. Uh, James tells us the endurance of Job. A and I think that's a much more fitting title because he endured all that came about, even though he didn't understand most of it. But he endured it. And it gets back to my favorite verse again, John 16, 33, In the world you'll have trouble, and me you can have a peace in the midst of that trouble. I've overcome the world. And it answers that question uh, probably not to anybody's satisfaction. Why do bad things happen to good people? It answers that question, but, but probably not to anybody's satisfaction. Because it really deals with righteousness, it deals with the devil, Satan. It deals with an individual. It deals, deals with 
circumstances. It deals with emotions. It deals with relationships. But most of all, it deals with the sovereignty of God. Because when you're all done, that's the only answer you can give to why do bad things happen to good people. The sovereignty of God. He's in control. He can allow things to happen. He can prevent things from happening. He can direct things to happen. It brings about the omnipotence of God. And it also deals with the omniscience of God. Uh, God can be trusted. Even though we don't understand it, and even though we don't like it, and even though we can't really explain why, God's sovereign. Bottom line is, we have to learn to trust him. Now, there's an outline that we can kind of follow as we go through the book of Job over the next couple of days, uh, well, weeks, months, whatever it's going to take. Uh, there's a five-part outline, which is God and Satan, the debate, the defense, Elihu, and then God. Chapters 1 and 2, God and Satan. Chapters 3 through 26, the debate. 27 through 31, the defense. Elihu is, dominates 32 through 37. And then we get to the conversations between God and Job himself in verses 38 through 42. Now, if you want a much simpler con uh, kind of way of looking at the book of Job, you could say conflict debate, repent. <laughs> I kind of like the three part. Conflict, debate, and repent. Well, I hope you're looking forward to uh, going through your chronological Bibles and studying Job. It's very unlikely that uh, my studies will uh, parallel the studies that you'll have in your uh, study books for the uh, chronological Bible study, but Nevertheless, maybe you can come back and forth, and maybe I'll give you some application that the uh, chronological Bible study doesn't give you, and maybe I'll give you some things that God brings to my mind that you don't have. When did it happen? Uh, probably around 2000 BC during the patriarchal time. Who's the author? Well, a lot of different people have been speculated as being the author, Moses, Job himself, Elihu doesn't really matter. God inspired it. God put it into his scriptures. Place is UZ. It's southeast of the Dead Sea. And it's a real life story. And as with all of the Bible, God illustrates his do's and don'ts and the events and the consequences of events in the book of Job. He answers a lot of questions for us. He causes some questions to be raised. It's an interesting book, and I hope that you're going to enjoy studying it as we look at the struggle with self, the struggle with wife, the struggle with friends, and even the struggle with God. And that's my thought for the day. I hope you're looking forward to our study. God bless you and have a great day.